Hey, Harrington Photo Crew, coming to you live from the print farm. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about how to print from Photoshop. So first thing we're going to want to do is uh, print a flattened file. Never print layered files and sharpen your photos before making your prints. So after that, we're going to go up to the file menu. We're going to select the print option or hit Command P. When the dialog box opens up, in the dialog box, uh, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to choose which printer that we want to print from. In this case, 7A or 7B. I'm going to leave it set to 7A. How many copies of the print that we want, and then we can select our orientation. In this case, I have it set to uh, landscape. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on the print settings button here, which is going to open up the print dialog box. In the print dialog box here, working our way down, once again, verify the number of copies, the printer itself, and then we're going to choose the paper size. Under paper size, we have letter, we have C size, which is 17 by 22, 11 by 17, in case you guys happen to uh, print on 11 by 17, or A3, which is your 13 by 19. Now notice that each one of them has multiple options to select from. So I'm going to go back to US letter and uh, speak a little bit about that. Uh, U.S. letter, we have uh, a regular one which is going to leave a border around the outside, and then we have one with borderless. Whenever you guys choose a borderless option, it makes your image a little bit bigger so that it can print over the edge of the paper itself and not leave any white space. Um, there's also a manual rear option. This is for heavier papers, for thicker papers. If you're not quite sure how to print, uh, with the rear setting, then I would advise you not to do so without assistance. Uh, again, that's reserved for um, fine art papers, for thicker papers only. And make sure that you are putting the paper in the correct slot, because if you don't, you will get a paper feed error. After you've selected your paper, you're going to come down to the drop-down menu di directly below it, and you're going to select Printer Settings. In the Printer Settings, uh, little menu here. We're going to go right down to media type. Under media type, this is where you're going to select your paper type. So whether you have a photo paper, a fine art paper, or a matte paper. Uh, those are typically the three options that we're going to be selecting from. So I'm going to go up to the uh, photo paper option because I'm going to be printing on luster paper. So I want to select the ultra premium photo paper luster option from here. But you'll notice that there's glossy, semi-gloss, and also the fiber, exhibition fiber papers listed here as well. Under fine art, you'll notice that they're all grayed out. And the reason that they're grayed out is, as I mentioned before, you have to choose the manual rear option in order to make those papers available to you. All right, that's the only way that it's going to work. All right, so let me go back to U.S. letter. I have it set to uh, uh, photo paper luster right now. It's going to be printing with the photo black inks. Uh, because, again, I'm printing on a, uh, a, a photo uh, glossy type paper. If you have a 16-bit file, I would encourage you to put a check mark in the 16-bit output option here. Um, your 16-bit, uh, I should say the 3880 printers, are capable of printing 16-bit uh, images, uh, which simply means that it's going to give you greater tonality. Next thing we want to do is we want to verify under color mode that our color management is turned off. We never want to make a print with color management turned on. So verify that it is off in parens, no color management. Next option, we're going to go down to output resolution. You have two options to choose from here, Superfine 1440 or Superphoto 2880. 1440 is going to be sufficient. All right, if you were to make two prints, uh, one of each one, 1440 and 2880, and put them side by side, you're probably not going to see much of a difference between the two of them. However, the 2880 is going to take longer the print, and it's going to use more ink. So stick with the 1440 for now. Also, by default, high speed has a check mark in it. Remove that check mark from high speed, and that's all that you have to do in this dialog box. Go ahead and hit save. Once you do so, it'll bring you back to the original print dialog box. And in here, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to jump over to uh, color handling. Now, by default, this is set to printer manages color. We never want the printer to manage our color. If doing so, you're, you're actually double uh, color managing the image itself. It's being managed, in this case, through Photoshop. Um, and if we choose printer manages color, then the printer is going to want to take over as well. So there's going to be a conflict there, and this is one of the areas where 
um, if you get uh, incorrect uh, colors in the print, this is one of the problems. So we want to make sure that Photoshop manages our color here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that option. And from the printer profile, we want to select the profile that is specific to the paper that we are printing on. Okay, so every paper is going to have a specific profile made exclusively for it. In this case, because I'm going to be using the Epson Luster paper, I want to make sure that I choose the Epson, uh, in this case, Epson Stylus Pro 3880 Premium Luster Photo Paper option. Okay, so now that that is all set, I'm pretty much all ready to go. Uh, this image is actually a lot bigger, and I, I changed it around a little bit, but I'm going to work my way down and, and talk about sizing in a bit. But the next thing we want to do is take a look at our rendering intent. Under our rendering intent, in Photoshop, we have four options to choose from. If you print through Lightroom, you only have two of them. So in Photoshop, we have perceptual, saturation, relative colorimetric, and absolute colorimetric. Uh, the only two options that we really need to be concerned with are relative colorimetric, also referred to as relative in Lightroom, and then perceptual. The default uh, used to be relative colorimetric in Photoshop, and um, because I already changed this, I'm not quite sure uh, if it defaults to perceptual now, but Lightroom defaults to perceptual. All right, you do not have to remove the check mark from black point compensation. Just leave that as is. Okay, so uh, perceptual, is, uh, the difference between the two of them, relative colorimetric and perceptual in short, is that relative colorimetric retains saturation. Perceptual retains continuous tone. Okay, now a rendering intent is how uh, out of gamut colors are handled. Okay, so if you're not quite sure what that means, and you're not quite sure which one is going to be better, leave it at perceptual. Okay, again, leave the ch check mark in black point compensation. And also, please do not go by what this little preview looks like. Because another one of the defaults in Photoshop is that match print colors is turned on. When that is turned on, you see how the image just got a little bit flatter. If I put on the show paper white, now the image turns a little bit bluer. So please do not go by what you see here. That is not an accurate representation of what your print is going to look like. So uh, you can leave them on. It doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt your print at all. But uh, just wanted to, to let you know to not use this as um, a means of uh, verifying what the uh, colors are going to look like in the print itself. All right, now I'm going to scroll down in this section once again. We have position and size. By default, it's set the center. Under scaled print size, normally it defaults to 100%. So at 100%, if I were to change this back, I changed the numbers around a little bit. This is a 20 by 25 inch image. So at 100%, it obviously doesn't fit in the 8.5 by 11. But you can also move it around if you wanted to. So if you wanted to print uh, really closely, um, just to do a test print, for example, of a very large image to see what it would look like, you can go ahead and um, do something like this. Uh, if you have a large image and you want it to fit onto the paper itself, use the scale to fit media option. That'll drop you down. Of course, the print resolution increases, but that's fine. Don't even worry about that. Uh, only one other option that I want to uh, point out here, and that is the printing marks. So what I'll do here is I'll, I'll knock this down to, let's say, 25%. So the image is much smaller now. And um, if I wanted to, for example, trim or know where to trim this image because it does have a white border around it, I can add corner crop marks. And what that's going to do is it's simply going to add the little corner crop marks around the image on the paper. So then I can use a straight edge and an X-Acto knife and just trim that image out if I needed to. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off, leave it as is. But we're all set to go now. Again, this is the most important part right up here at the top. Photoshop should always manage your color and make sure that you are choosing the proper profile. Uh, the rendering intent, perceptual or color, uh, relative color metric. You're all set. Go ahead and hit print. Once you hit print, paper cut is going to open up. And from here, you would just verify uh, that you're ready to pay for the print. And you're all set to go. All right, so happy printing.